All right, normally this is a time we kick off spring practice, a lot of excitement in the air, and while that is true here in Lincoln, it's also a time of transition. Trev Alberts announcing last week he was leaving Nebraska, taking the same position at Texas A&M. First of all, Sean, how did that strike you? It just all happened so fast. I mean, I think when Trev Albert signed that initial agreement that was eight years, that would guarantee he'd be one of the five highest paid ADs in the country and pretty much a fully guaranteed eight-year type deal, which was unheard of for an athletic director. You're like, okay, well, Trev Alberts is going to be here for a long time. So to see that just come undone, not in a matter of years, but in a matter of months, mm -hmm. I don't care who you are. It's a surprise. And the leadership structure, yeah, you can have your opinions on – the political landscape of things, that really shouldn't matter if you're committed to a place like Nebraska. So I do think it was a, a tough deal, and Matt Rule did his best to kind of walk that political line, but there's no doubt it was a, a tough few days for Rule as he tried to unpack all of this. Yeah, everyone was surprised, including Matt Rule, who mentioned that he, he was out on a, a father-son trip with his, his golfing with his son. And, and it kind of hit him by surprise, as, as probably it should be. It did everybody. So, But Matt Rule saying, hey, he doubled down, saying he's all in at Nebraska, even though the people and the reasons that he came to Nebraska are all departed. Right, and I, I think the president now, that's the next hire. How's that going to happen? The Board of Regents we know will meet on Wednesday. Will they get any closer to kind of moving forward with a candidate as a president than obviously the athletic director? And I think if you're Matt Rule – you know, like, look, I, he could have maybe an opinion or a voice mm -hmm. in this process, which doesn't always happen. Usually you're hired by a guy and either he is there for a long time or he gets fired and then the new guy comes in and you have nothing to do with it. So Matt Rule, I would think, with this new hire, is going to have an opinion in the voice. And I do think Governor Jim Pillen will, will have, obviously, a voice. He's a former Husker, a former head of the Regents, and somebody that, you know, rule talks to regularly. And I wouldn't be surprised if the Pede family who controls and runs the collective, which runs a huge part of what's going on. I mean, there's, this will be a big moment now for this university's history. Um, when you lose Ted Carter and Ronnie Green and now uh, Trev Alberts and to have to kind of replace two of those three guys still moving forward, the history of Nebraska really kind of hinges on some of these decisions. Yeah, Matt Rule saying how what a pivotal time this is, not just at Nebraska, but in college athletics as a whole. This will be an interesting development to see who takes over here in Lincoln. But let's talk football on the field. Obviously, the immediate concern is the opening of spring football practice, and Matt Rule touched on it. A lot of newcomers, that was really the theme, almost two dozen new Huskers. Yeah, there's 23 freshmen and transfers here. Uh, that I've gotten here early. 16 are scholarship freshmen, one's a walk-on, then you have six transfers. That's the largest number they've ever had. And I think that's going to be the trend moving forward. Most of your transfer portal guys will always get here in January if they graduate early. And then obviously, when you when you look at um, you know your freshmen, the earlier signing days have kind of helped advance things forward to allow you know guys mm -hmm. to get on campus early. So it's a great opportunity for the spring. I think particularly, Andy, with the quarterback position, you're going to have Dylan Riola, you're going to have Daniel Kalen, two true freshmen, two Elite 11 guys that will get real reps, top two unit reps in the spring, which that's just not the norm usually, and I think this will be a great spring for those guys. And a great spring for a bunch of wide receivers. Not only do you have uh, guys coming into the program, but guys who haven't gone through a spring, guys like Malachi Coleman. And we heard from uh, the transfer banks, Jamal Banks, who, who really made an impression here in Lincoln meeting the media. Yeah, Jamal Banks is going to be a factor. I, I think he has a real opportunity to be a 1,000-yard type receiver. I mean, you look at his body of work. He's already been an all-ACC level receiver. I talked to him at length in January, and you know he turned down. I don't think people realize this. He took official visits to Michigan, Notre Dame, Wisconsin, you name it. He had just about anywhere he wanted to could, could have gone. He picked Nebraska for the opportunity, and I do think Dylan Riola and the potential of him at quarterback really excited Banks. And then, obviously, NIL and other things play a factor, too. But he really, I think, is going to be a home run transfer addition. And on the de defensive side of the football, the fact that Tony White has another year with these guys, there were smiles across the board when talking to some of the Huskers before spring practice began. You know, when things really started going well for White last year, I'm like, well, there are always going to be some jobs that could get his attention. And literally all of them came open this offseason. Syracuse, his former employer. San Diego State, where he had once coached. 
UCLA, where he played, USC with his connections to LA, had a defensive coordinator job. There were four legitimate opportunities for Tony White, three being head coach jobs, one being a coordinator job at USC that Nebraska had to fight off. Uh, but at the end, Tony White wants to be at Nebraska. He likes it here. His job just began. And it's a huge win for Matt Rule to have Tony White back here for the 2.0 version, as people were calling yeah. it today, of his defense. Yeah, no doubt about it. All right, big picture here. What should Husker fans expect over the next couple of weeks leading up to the spring game? Yeah, it's a, it's a five-week spring here for Nebraska, three practices per week. Um, generally, you'll have two major scrimmages besides the red-white spring game. So I always look at spring ball as this. Yeah, the practices are important, but your two big scrimmages are huge. Unfortunately, those are closed in the media. Um, and then, obviously, the red-white spring game. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of fun to see the number of young faces. Um, you've got the entire coaching staff uh, back um, with, with – Glenn Thomas essentially moving into the full-time role that Bob Wager left in August. Um, now he is now uh, the full-time quarterbacks coach. Marcus Satterfield moves over to the tight ends role that Wager once occupied a year ago. So um, yeah, I think the continuity is really important as well as you look for Matt Rule to build the year two. Yeah, and Nebraska is done with spring break, so no halftime during spring drills. It is all from go time from practice one leading up to the spring game, which is April 27th.